Hello, Tansy. Welcome to the 50th Annual Saskatchewan Prayer Breakfast. I'm filming at Government House in Regina, which is in Treaty 4 territory and homeland of the Métis. Before proceeding with the program, I would like to say a few words about His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh. The Duke was a remarkable individual who was devoted to Her Majesty and to service. He was involved with close to 800 charitable organizations, including more than 40 in Canada. He displayed a genuine interest in people. He was much loved and will be fondly remembered. Her Majesty and the Royal Family are in our thoughts and prayers. The Saskatchewan Prayer Breakfast began in 1972. For half a century, people from all walks of life and faith traditions have gathered in April for a time of fellowship and inspiration. Although we cannot meet in person this year, we can gather virtually with people from communities across Saskatchewan and beyond. Thank you for joining us online. Sandra Masters grew up on the prairies and is called Regina home for 20 years. She worked in the agriculture sector before she was elected mayor of Regina in November of 2020. It is my pleasure to invite her worship, Sandra Masters, to offer the opening prayer. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to welcome everyone participating in this year's 50th anniversary of the Saskatchewan Prayer Breakfast. This Saskatchewan tradition is made more special this year by its golden anniversary and by the extra effort made by the Lieutenant Governor and his staff and the Prayer Breakfast Committee, allowing us to gather virtually in these challenging times. This morning, it's my honor to offer this opening prayer. I now invite you to join me to pray. Dear God, Thank you for another new day to celebrate your gift of life on the Saskatchewan Prairie. We thank you for our families and our community and for the comfort that flows from sharing our lives with friends and loved ones. We pray that you continue to grant us the ingenuity and courage to meet today's challenges and that your solutions will protect and lift up the most vulnerable among us. We ask that you bless our province so it will continue to provide opportunity and inspiration to those of us who call it home. Amen. Thank you, Your Worship. The Honorable Scott Moe was born and raised on a Saskatchewan grain farm. He received a Bachelor of Science in Agriculture from the University of Saskatchewan. He was first elected to the Saskatchewan Legislature in 2011 as the MLA for Rostern Shelbrook. He was re-elected in 2016, became Premier in 2018, and was elected once again in 2020. It is my pleasure to invite Premier Mo to offer the first reading. I'd like to thank His Honour for inviting me to read a Bible verse uh, here this morning uh, at his prayer breakfast. Uh, the verse uh, that I have selected is from the book of 2 Corinthians, which was written by Paul um, to the congregation at the Church of Corinthians. It was written at a time when the church was struggling with many divisions and quarrels. And in many ways, like uh, the divisions and quarrels that we may be having uh, in society today. Paul had encouraged uh, those to be generous, to give willingly, to give cheerfully. Uh, he encouraged them to be resilient, and he encouraged them to foster their faith, not only in themselves, but in one another. I think that's quality advice, and these are great words for us to pay heed to today. So from the book of 2 Corinthians, in the fourth chapter, verses 8 and 9, we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Thank you. Thank you, Premier. Dr. Saqib Shahab is Saskatchewan's Chief Medical Health Officer. He has worked internationally as an internist and as a public health expert with multilateral health and donor agencies. Dr. Shahab is a fellow in the Public Health and Preventive Medicine of the Royal College of Physicians of Canada. He has played a crucial role in guiding our province through the pandemic, and I thank him for his outstanding leadership. It is my pleasure to invite Dr. Shahab to offer the prayer for the province. Thank you, Your Honour. Good morning, fellow residents of Saskatchewan. I am pleased to offer the prayer for the province. Please join me in prayer. I am sure we all realize how hard this year has been for so many and in so many different ways. 
we have lost many to COVID. And yet the pandemic has also given us pause. Time to reach out to family, friends, and community. Time to realize what is the essence and what is important. The pandemic has emphasized how connected we all are on this planet and in this life. What happens anywhere matters. How we respond as all of humanity matters. Many times we pass by each other swiftly and never see each other. This past year, we have slowed down and we have seen each other. Are we inclusive and accepting of one another or do we let our differences divide us? Both science and good intentions can change the world, but it has to be both, not one or the other. Let us pause to remember those we have lost and let us look forward to a better future in every way and for everyone. COVID is a sticky virus, but through our collective and kind and considerate actions, we have been able to keep it at bay. Significant events teach us grace in accepting life's challenges, humility to acknowledge the limits of our knowledge and shortcomings, and belief and faith in the strength of our collective actions. Science and knowledge matter, Wisdom and forbearance matter. Family and community matter. Challenges draw us closer to our faith, our spirituality, and our shared humanity. The pandemic has shown a light on our heroes who stepped forward when the rest of us were asked to stay home. Healthcare workers, police, firefighters, teachers, bus, truck, and taxi drivers, grocery store workers, gas station staff, retailers, personal care providers, essential industry and agriculture workers, farmers, and utility workers. They and many others kept working bravely without complaint. Once we are all vaccinated, our provinces and our nation's work remains to help everyone in the world get vaccinated. After all, we are each other's keeper. For all these gifts, our blessings, we give thanks. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Shahab. Ryan Miley grew up on a farm in southern Saskatchewan. He's a family doctor and was head of the University of Saskatchewan College of Medicine, Division of Social Accountability. He was elected to the Saskatchewan Legislature in 2017 as the MLA for Saskatoon Miwasan. He became leader of the official opposition in 2018 and was re-elected in 2020. It is my pleasure to invite Ryan Miley to offer the second reading. Hi. I'm Ryan Miley, leader of the official opposition, and the Bible verse that I'm reading for you today comes from Isaiah. Uh, thought about this one, you know, it talks about making ourselves clean. Uh, that's been on everybody's mind during the, the pandemic, but I don't think in this case Isaiah was talking about hand sanitizer or, or Lysol wipes. He was talking about being pure in spirit. And, you know, in a time when so many are making sacrifices, so many are struggling. Uh, it can be hard sometimes to look beyond your own challenges and remember that there are people who are in even more difficult circumstances than your own. And uh, this verse really brings that home to me, reminds us to, as well as making sure we support ourselves and those around us, be looking to those who are struggling more and reaching out to the most vulnerable. Wash and make yourselves clean Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. A good reminder for us today from Isaiah chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Have a great day. And God bless. Thank you, Mr. Miley. Real life brothers, JJ, Dusty, Luke, Brock, and Ty, grew up on the family farm near Shonovan, Saskatchewan. The Hunter brothers attribute much of their success to their upbringing in a home dedicated to faith, music, and sport. Their album, State of Mind, was the number one selling country album in Canada for four consecutive weeks. Their top 10 hit, Born and Raised, was selected as the official anthem for the 2018 World Junior Hockey Tournament and they recently received 10 nominations for the 2021 Saskatchewan Country Music Association Awards. It is my pleasure to introduce the Hunter Brothers. 
We're the Hunter Brothers, and faith has always been a foundational part of our lives, of our family's lives, as well as our music. And it's an honor for us to be part of this year's prayer breakfast. We want to perform for you Amazing Grace. sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. My chains are gone. Thank you for that beautiful performance. It is now my privilege to introduce our guest speaker. Rory Allen is a talented and charismatic singer who draws capacity audiences. He has performed with the Regina Symphony Orchestra, the Imperials, and the Jordanaires. His live concert CD, In My Father's House, was nominated for a Western Canadian Music Award for Outstanding Christian Recording. Born and raised in Saskatchewan, Rory Allen grew up entertaining. 
Gospel music and singing in church were formative for his voice and his faith. Rory and his wife and business manager, Lori, donated a tremendous amount of time to charitable and fundraising activities. Rory performs an annual Christmas concert at the Pasco Hospital Palliative Care Ward. Rory and Lori have supported the Regina Humane Society, the Regina Food Bank, Wascana Rehabilitation Center, United Way, and many more. It is my pleasure to introduce Rory Allen. Thank you, Your Honor, for those kind words and that introduction, and I want to thank the Prayer Breakfast Committee for doing all the work that they do behind the scenes. I want to tell you a little bit about my background for you folks that may not know me. Uh, I'm, of course, a Regina guy. I have a wife named Lori, who's uh, the love of my life, and also we have four great children, and we now have a almost two-year-old granddaughter, which is very special. Uh, Grandma and Grandpa love her very much, I'll tell you that. Uh, actually, I was born in Saskatoon because we uh, lived in Kalonzi at the time and moved to Regina when I was in about grade two. And then uh, I remember my first love of music, I think, uh, was probably grade three or four. I remember my dad singing around the kitchen all the time. He used to sing at the top of his lungs. Uh, wartime songs. He was in a Lancaster bomber squadron in World War II, so I'd hear all the war songs, and uh, he'd sing uh, gospel songs, and then he'd also uh, do a lot of impressions, uh, a lot of Porky Pig and a lot of other of those cartoon characters. So that's what I remember about my dad. I remember my mom working really hard all the time, and she also liked to listen to music, along with my sisters. They liked Elvis Presley, and uh, so my sisters would sing along to Elvis's records, especially at Christmas time. And so we had music in the house, especially at Christmas time, and Elvis was a big part of that. When I got to grade 12, I got right into um, choir and B band. And I think probably at grade 11, uh, I got asked to be in the drama produ uh, productions and also in the musicals. And so that's where I kind of got the, the bug for being on stage in high school. Anytime you hear applause, it's sort of addictive and uh, it kind of pulls you in. And uh, there's a few other uh, productions that I went into. I went into community theater uh, during grade 12. Uh, there was the first one we did was two little theater productions. I did two of those. Uh, we did the trial of Louis Riel. I was the court clerk. Uh, IODE production of uh, Hello Dolly. I was Rudolph the head waiter. And uh, my favorite one was the Lyric Light Opera Society's production of Pirates of Penzance. I remember going to rehearsals for that one and looking across at where the soprano and alto sections were. And there was a beautiful uh, dark haired girl with brown eyes that I fell in love with that I knew I had no chance with. But we ended up dating and getting married. I remember uh, after we were dating, before we got married though, uh, Lori uh, came to me one day and she looked different because uh, we just had a just a normal teenage dating thing going on and she but she her whole face was her countenance was different she was excited she was um, happy just a, a new light in her face and I said what's going on and she just kept smiling and said I just asked Jesus into my heart to be my savior and I went that's cool that's great for you. That's good. Anyhow, that basically that's how it started. And Lori kept um, showing me scriptures over the next couple of months and inviting me to go to church. I didn't really want to go to church. Uh, I didn't want anything to do with that. But uh, I was in love with her and I said, okay, okay, I'll come. And uh, went to church. Uh, some of the stuff started to ring true to me. Uh, I started to kind of get what she was at, uh, telling me. And uh, I remember I worked at the loading dock at Sears. It's loading trucks with the guys. And Lori worked at the bank. Now, one day I was on the loading dock with my friend Al, and we were arguing about Noah's Ark. I was defending it for some reason. And just before we came to blows, I, I knew I had to do something. So I walked down the rug hole in a, one of the trailers we were loading, and that's a section on the side where you put all the rugs and the linoleum, 
And I walked all the way to the end, and I dropped to my knees, and I said, Father, I'm sorry for what I've done. I said, please, Jesus, come into my heart and save me. And he did that moment. I walked out of that trailer, a new guy. It was like a thousand pounds had been lifted off my shoulders. I was so happy telling all the guys on the loading dock. And of course, all the guys on the loading dock thought I was nuts. But uh, it started to change my life from there. Lori and I um, started doing more at church together. We got in the music ministry together. Uh, I led the, the music. Uh, we did children's church. Uh, Lori played the organ for the music. Uh, we did uh, youth group. And uh, everything was going great. And then some tough times hit. Lost my job. Got into huge debt. We had three little kids at home at the time, three of the four. People were bringing us groceries. And uh, we decided to do uh, uh, an Elvis uh, song, because that's one of the impressions I did, for a church talent night. And so I did it, and the, the crowd was went nuts. They loved it. And so we said, hmm, maybe we could do some birthday parties and make some money for groceries. And from that time on, it kind of went from doing birthday parties the the uh, the show grew and grew and grew to where it's been 25 years that I've done the show. I have a tremendous band, 11 musicians and singers. We sang with the Regina Symphony Orchestra, performed with them, with the Jordanaires that sang with Elvis Presley, and with the Imperials Quartet that sang with Elvis. We uh, we've been blessed over the years, but some of the stuff that we did early and uh, uh, the charity that we have done. Uh, one of them one was a festival of trees, and there was a, a young lady there that I went to sing for, and she had MS, and she was shaking so bad I had to help her up on stage. And when I grabbed her hand and looked in her eyes, she smiled, and I started singing Blue Christmas. And she stopped shaking. For the entire song, she was still. And as soon as I finished the song, I gave her a hug, she started shaking again. And uh, it's just, I think, a wonderful thing what God does with music for people. It's quite a, quite a spiritual and a therapeutical thing music can be for people. Um, I mean, who knew that uh, doing an Elvis show would open up doors like that? It's more of a ministry. Uh, one of our most uh, special shows that we did, is it is the most special show we do. It's not actually a show, it's a concert. And we go to palliative care and do a Christmas concert. Every Christmas, I think we've done it for over 20 years. And that's where they have a designated area for the patients to come and sit and people come and perform for them and give them a little bit of Christmas uh, joy for the season. And the folks will sit on chairs and our we bring our uh, rhythm section in and the girls to sing and we, uh, sing and, and perform and one of the most special things you can do and the most intimate things you can do is sing a song to someone, grab their hand and look into their eyes and the, the feeling that comes over when you know that you're looking into the eyes of someone that's about to slip into eternity and that uh, they're trusting you in that moment to bring them some joy and you kind of go, who am I? but it's so special. And then the folks that can't be brought into the uh, common area that are too uh, sick to come out, we're asked sometimes to go around their bedside with their families and uh, sing, sing with them around the bedside and uh, pray with them. And everyone that we've asked if they wanted prayer always says yes. So it's turned into uh, just quite a, uh, a ministry. It's a big, big show. It's a a tribute show that we do to Elvis, but at the roots of it is God's love and what an opportunity it's been for Lori and I and our family and of course our band members are able to be a part of a lot of those intimate things that go on. That makes everything worthwhile uh, to me. Anyhow, God wants to hear you. He likes, he likes your prayers. He loves your prayers. And uh, I just pray that you guys have a blessed time. I, I just want to leave you with 
one scripture that says it all for me, and it's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you for letting me share this morning, and I just bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Rory, for sharing an inspiring message. And thanks to you and Lori for your outstanding community service. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our final participant. Michael Vanderhoeft is a grade 12 student at Regina Christian School, where he serves on a student leadership council. He hopes one day to become a firefighter. It is my pleasure to invite Michael to offer the closing prayer. Father, Lord in heaven, we come to you at the end of this prayer breakfast. We thank you that it went well and that we could still have it amidst this pandemic. We pray that you'll bless us on our way as we leave this place now, that you'll be with us and keep us in your care. Thank you for Rory Allen who gave a great talk to us, that it went well and you gave him the words to speak and that you were with him the whole time. We thank you for all the many blessings you give to us daily and that you'll continue to bless us and keep us in your care. We thank and praise you for giving your one and only son to die on the cross to save your chosen people from their sins. We pray that you will be with everyone here and that they will come to know you more and more and that we can all worship and praise you. I pray for our city and our province, that you'll be with our leaders like Sandra Masters and Premier Scott Hall, that you'll continue to be with them and keep them in your care, that they will rule wisely and have strength to continue to help out our community. Pray that you'll forgive everyone here of their sins and keep sin and evil far from us. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Michael. My thanks once again to all of our participants. I'm grateful to the members of the Saskatchewan Prayer Breakfast Committee for their leadership and the staff of the Lieutenant Governor's Office for their support in planning this event. And thanks to all of you for joining us online. If you would like to receive an email about next year's event, please visit the Lieutenant Governor's website to subscribe to email notifications. Have a great day, everyone.